Good morning. Today is Wednesday, the 12th day of Nisan. So we continue in chapter 41 in Tanya. The Alter Rebbe explains in this chapter, as we said yesterday, this is the very basic fundamental chapter. The idea what we need to meditate in, in beginning of the day and in general, before you do a mitzvah, about the greatness of Hashem. Al Rebbe focuses on the fact that it's not enough to do a mitzvah with love to Hashem, but you do need also to have the fear of Hashem, the awe of Hashem before every mitzvah. Because one might think that in order to do a mitzvah, all you need is love, to love Hashem, and that's why I do the mitzvah. Fear of Hashem stops me from doing something which is you're not supposed to do. You're fearful of getting disconnected from Hashem. Here comes the Alter Rebbe and tells it that also on the regular basis, even when you're about to do something positive, it's not enough that you're doing it with, with love of Hashem, but you also have to have the fear of Hashem, realizing, recognizing the greatness of Hashem. And that the great God that encompasses the world and fills the world, he gave the fullest attention to each individual and says, I need you, I want you, that great Hashem. And this is when you're thinking about this great Hashem being there, right there with you and watching you and seeing how every mitzvah is done, that gives you a feeling of completely nullifying yourself to Hashem. The previous Rebbe once, uh, described a uh, story with a, with, a, with, a, <clears throat> with a soldier that was, um, he was working with, by the king, he was serving the king. And later on he came home and he described to his friend, to his family members, how it, his experience that he had. So he gave in detail a description what it looks like before you enter the palace, all this entourage, all these great uh, the ministers that are standing there, everybody in awe. And he describes further and further how you, the, the closer you get, you get feel, filled with a with, uh, feeling of awe and fear of the king. And finally, until you actually see the king. And at that moment, when he described how he was seeing the king, when he described it, he fainted. Because he relived that experience that he had, that the deep awe that he had, the deep fear of the king. So the Rebbe says, this is what we, the Alter Rebbe says here, what we learned yesterday, that constantly we have to have this in mind, that we're standing in front of the king, not only in the palace, we're standing right there before, in front of the king. This was the first meditation the al Rebbe explained in this chapter. And that is something we should, every single morning, in the, in, in the beginning of the day, that's what you think before you do, and al Rebbe says also before you do a mitzvah, every time before you got about to do a mitzvah, think about what is, it, what is it that you're going to do? What is it that you're going, you're going to light the Shabbos candles. What, what, are you, what are you about to do? Just to light a nice candle, to be, to be nice? You're thinking about the greatness, for the light that you bring. This is the mitzvah of God. You're bringing spiritual light into this world, into your life, into your family's life. And the same thing with every mitzvah that you do. Today, Dalta Rebbe is going to explain in today's lesson, the second meditation. Not just in general, the idea that you're standing in front of the king, but also the fact that the mitzvah itself that you are about to do has in it God's will, and each individual mitzvah has its own way of drawing God's will and God's light into this world and into the person that does them. So let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says today. Continues the altar over here. 
וגם איזבוינן. איך שאויר אין סייף ברוך הוא, הסייף כלאלמין, וממלא כלאלמין, הוא רוצה נעליין, he should also reflect how the light of the blessed אין סייף, which encompasses all worlds, and pervades all worlds. We explain that in length, what it means, encompasses, meaning the light, the intense light, that which is too powerful for the world to receive in an inward way, in an internal way, it pervades the world, is the way Hashem reduces his light to, to, you know, to the point that the, pre, the world will be able to receive it in an internal way. And which is ident identical with the higher will, that's an alien, the higher will of Hashem. So who melubash be'oisiyos ve'choch masat toiro? So this great light of Hashem is clothed in the leather, the letters, and wisdom of the Torah, both in the physical letters that is written, and also in the wisdom of the Torah that you contemplate. So when you sit and study Torah. You have to understand, you have to meditate that this Torah that you are about to learn, the Torah that you're about to study, it's not just a nice intellectual experience. Before you go sit on, you read a book in the library, do you have any thoughts? Nobody thinks, but what, what is it? I want? You read the book, whatever you, you enjoy, an intellectual experience or emotional experience. But here we come to study the Torah. Says the Alter Rebbe, this is the meditation you have to have. Think before you study, before you sit down. That, that you, that's why we make the bracha in the morning. We're not, we, we're not supposed to study Torah before we say the blessings. Baruch Atah Hashem. Elokeinu melech ha'olam, asher b'chabanu mekol ha'amim. That Hashem chose us and gave us the Torah and so on. Lasik bidivitera, the bracha, the bracha of giving that uh, that uh, we're before we're studying the Torah. The blessings is special blessings. We're supposed to thank Hashem for this special experience that Hashem gave us the Torah. And so every time before you sit down, you make the bracha. You make only once a day in the morning, the blessing. But before you sit down, every time you're supposed to think. What is it, the Torah, that we're going, we're going to learn now? We're going to study right here, right now. What we're studying, the, the word, the Tanya, those the words of Hashem also. And those, when, we, when you study these words, you realize that in here there is the will of Hashem. Hashem is in the letters and in the wisdom of understanding the words of Hashem. Those are God, godly spiritual things. And the same thing says the Alter Rebbe, continues the Alter Rebbe, is also when you do the mitzvahs, and the Alter Rebbe brings here the example of the tzitzis and the tefillin. These are the, why these mitzvahs? Because these are usually mitzvahs that men do right in the, in the beginning, right in the morning, in the beginning of the day, they wear the tzitzis and they put on the tefillin. And the truth, every mitzvah that you do, but here, the Rebbe brings this example. It says, Oy, with Or, if his meditation takes place before he puts on the talis and tefillin, he should contemplate how the divine will is clothed in these tzitzis and tefillin. It being God's will that a Jew wears them. So, so that is you're putting on the tzitzis, you're understanding that this is Hashem's will, that you should have those tzitzis and this tefillin. And what happens when you read the Torah or when you wear this tzitzis and tefillin? And through his recitation or study of the Torah or by his wearing the tzitzis and tefillin, he draws upon himself, he draws upon himself his blessed light. 
דהיינו, על חלק אלוקה ממעל שבתוך גופי. That is, over the part of God above, that is his soul, which abides in his body and animates it. So when you wear the, 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 the tzitzis and you put on the tefillin, you are drawing down Hashem's light, which is in the tzitzis, to be, to be upon your nasham, upon your soul, which is in your body. And that animates your body. This it does with intent that it may be absorbed and nullified in his blessed light. It says the individual's intent then is that the aforementioned study and performance have an effect on his soul, in particular, as will soon be explained, the intellectual and emotional faculties of the soul are affected by the feeling. And here comes the Alter Rebbe to explain in details, a little more details about how this meditation is connected with the tefillin. So in the tefillin, this is what is interesting, the tefillin we have also in the Shulchan Aruch itself, it says that when you wear the tefillin, you're supposed to have the kavana, you're supposed to have the meditation, that this is le shabed amoyach v'alei. To subjugate our mind and our heart to Hashem. That's what we have in mind when we wear the tefillin. So what is interesting, in the tefillin, the tefillin has four compartments, the tefillin of the head at least, and the same thing as the tefillin on the arm, it's one compartment, but it's four different portions of the Torah. Those four, those four uh, portions of the Torah that is in the tefillin, they represent the intellect, which is Chabad, Chachma, Bina, and Das. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We said four, right? But now we're counting three. And that the reason is because Das, the third, the knowledge is divided into two. And why is it? So, in, I mean, we spoke about this in the earlier chapters in Tanya, but in short, the Chachma is wisdom. Wisdom is the spark of godliness, the spark of the intellect. Wisdom is something which is complete nullification to above because in order to get the idea, you need to remove yourself completely and allow yourself to get receive something from above. This is connected with a portion, Kadesh. One of the portions in the tefillin, Kadesh, this talks about Kaddish means holy. Holiness is connected with wisdom because wisdom is about nullification to Hashem and receiving the same thing as the idea of holiness. So that's one part, part of the wisdom. Then the portion of Hayaki Yeviacha, that uh, the second portion there is the idea of the Bina, the understanding. In that portion, it talks about when your son will ask you the question, talking about getting closer now to Pesach, is asking, what is this? And the, the understanding, the giving, the explain, explaining, that's the idea of Bina. So Bina is the concept of understanding. And so you have Kadesh, that's Chochma Bina, the spark, the nullification to above, and Bina, the understanding of the concept. Then the Shema and the Haya im Shamoa, the two other portions, those are connected with Das, with knowledge, because we explained what is knowledge. Knowledge is connecting, taking the, in, the intellect, the intellectual idea, and connecting to it. And when you connect to it, it can go in one of two ways. It develops the midot, develops the feelings, the connection. And in general, the, the, the midot, the emotions, 
are generally divided into two, which is chesed and gevura. The, the, the closeness and gevura is severity, is, is distance. Something when you develop a feel understanding towards something, you either want to connect to it or you want to distance yourself from it or you feel the distance of it. So the das, the connection, connecting to what you understand, it develops either a feeling of love, connecting, wanted to connect to Hashem, or year of fear of Hashem, which is feeling the distance of how small you are in the presence of Hashem. So this is the das. And the das, the understanding, that the, the knowledge, we call it, uh, knowing, connecting, is represented in the two other portions, the Shema and V'oyem Shemoa. Shema Israel, this talks about V'ahavta Tashem Elokecha, talks about the love to Hashem. And V'oyem Shemoa, <coughs> the, uh, the other portion, which is talks about listening to the words of Hashem. It says how to be careful, not to distance yourself from Hashem. This is more the severities. This is more the yira. This is more the gevura. So this is the four, the four parts of the tefillin. The Alter Rebbe says here, that when you wear the tefillin, you realize and you recognize that this represents the four parts of the intellect. And the, and the idea is to subjugate your intellect to Hashem. That what, what you think and what you do throughout the day should be affected by this meditation. So. And of course, this concept of, of the wearing the, the tefillin uh, is, is of, although it's a mitzvah that is for men, but this is not for the, today to the, the explain that, that the women also, they have the spiritual connection, the spiritual connection that, that uh, we get through the tefillin. Although we did find throughout the history, it's not that uh, that certain women who did uh, wear the fillin as well, but in general, the woman is more of a in, uh, it is is born in has it innately that spiritual connection with Hashem, and it, and it especially it is it is expressed through the mitzvahs that the women are connected with. But uh, it's again that's a subject for us, a separate job, subject for another day. So, so let's continue inside. Specifically through tefillin, he should intend that the attributes of wisdom and understanding, <clears throat> which are in his divine soul, should be nullified and absorbed into the attributes of wisdom and understanding of the blessed Yisrael. It should be b'pchines and chachma so yibinos shalein soi v'ochu ha'melu basho is derech prat v'parshi is kadesh v'oyor ki v'yacha. These being clothed in particular in the passages of kadesh and v'oyor ki v'yacha Kadesh is the Chachma, Voya Kiviacha is the Bina, and as we explained, the Shema, Voyem Shemoa is the Das. The Hainu, so what is the meditation? What is this supposed to lead you to? Says the Alter Rebbe. Shaloi Leishtamesh, Bechachmosei, Ubinosei, Shebenafshoi, Bilti Lashem Levade. That is to say, that he should use the wisdom and understanding that are in his soul for God alone. Only in pursuit of Torah and mitzvahs and for understanding godliness. When you, whatever you do throughout the day, whatever you do throughout the day, even when you do mundane stuff, the mundane stuff are only done in a way that is helping you serving Hashem. Whether it's going to work, 
to be able to earn money, to be able to raise a family in a, in a kosher Torah way, and so on. Also, similarly, he should intend that the attribute of Das, the third of the three components of the intellect, so that you should, that the, the attribute of Das in his soul which includes both the chesed, the kindness, and the gevura, the severity, meaning the fear and love in his heart, they should be completely nullified and included in, in Hashem. That this should be nullified and absorbed into the attribute of the higher knowledge the Das Elyon, which comprises kindness and severity, and which is clothed in the passage of Shema and Ve'oyem Shamoya, as we just explained. Ve'hainu. This, what does that mean in, in actuality? As it is written in the Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law, Le'shabed alei ve'amoyach. This accords with the statement of Shulchan Aruch, that while putting on to fill in, one should intend to make one's heart and brain subservient to Hashem. In this way, then, the divine soul as a whole and its intellective and emotive faculties in particular are affected by one's wearing the tefillin. So this is the second type of meditation where the Alter Rebbe explains that the, the idea of meditating, not just in general, that Hashem watches you and sees you and wants you to do the mitzvah and connect to him, but you also in particular when we do the mitzvahs, how each mitzvah in particular represents the will of Hashem and how this mitzvah is supposed to get you also to be included in the will of Hashem. With each mitzvah, it has its unique way of giving this message of transmitting a special the mitzvah that you do in the beginning of the day, the tefillin, the talus, to begin the day with completely subjugating yourself to Hashem, and therefore it should have an effect on the entire day, that whatever you do that day should all should be filled with that uh, feeling of being one with Hashem and doing everything that we do for Hashem. So this is the end of today's shir. We shall continue tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. Any questions we can take now?